In this session, I get to derive Avogadro's law from the expression of kinetic pressure coming up. Avogadro's law simply states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. Now, this law was developed by Avogadro in 1811 and was well established way before the kinetic theory was even developed. We shall consider two gases. We have gas one here and we have another gas right there. Of course, we are putting them in two different containers. Now, take note, this is gas one and gas two. Now, we are saying that if this is gas 1, we have put in right there, and this is gas 2 that we have put in right there, we are going to subject this gas to the same pressure as gas 2, and we are going to subject this gas to the same, vo in the same volume. In other words, this gas is in the same box. The volumes are the same. So the volumes are the same here for gas 1 and gas 2. The pressure is the same, and the volumes are the same. Now, if the pressures and the volumes are the same, Using the ideal gas, we shall say, for example, for gas 1, uh, we can say that P1, uh, V1, is equal to the number of moles in this gas times the constant R times the temperature of the gas. Even right here, we shall say this is gas 2, so the pressure of P2 times the volume of, of 2 is going to be the number of moles of 2. Of This is the number of moles of 1 times the constant R times the temperature and we are saying that since we have put these two gases in two different containers in such a way that we made sure that the pressures are the same and the volumes in here the containers are the same of these two different gases it means that p1 v1 that is p1 v1 is going to be equal to p2 v2 these are the same because the pressure and volume for gas 1 is the same as the pressure and volume for gas 2 so if these two are the same it means that also this NRT for this gas 1 is going to be the same as this NRT for gas 2. So it turns out that um, for equal volumes at the same pressure, it means that P1 V1, which is, is, is going to be equal to P2 V2 like I had explained earlier. Therefore, this expression here for N1 RT1 is going to be for equal for N2 RT2. And so if this is equal to that, therefore it's equal to this, should be equal to that. And now if you look at that, you will find that, of course, the R's are the same. They will cancel out. The temperatures are the same. In the, we've subjected the two volumes to the same temperature. So it means that T1 is going to be equal to T2, and therefore it will be the same temperature. They will also cancel out. The other, the, the other thing that will remain is N1 and N2 and therefore it means that N1 will definitely be equal to N2. Now this number of moles in gas 1 being equal to the number of moles in gas 2 when we have subjected them to the same conditions like we have explained, it enables us to prove Avogadro's law. This simply means that equal volumes of two gases which are at the same temperature and at the same pressure will contain the same number of molecules and that is how we have been able to show Avogadro's law. So Avogadro's law simply states that equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure will contain the same number of molecules and then right now we are going to go into how we show this law using expression of kinetic pressure. So just like I had illustrated earlier, we are going to ex we are going to use this kinetic pressure expression to show or to prove Avogadro's law. But we are going to use two gases again, and we are going to sub we are going to apply the same treatment for gas one, like for and also for gas two, and then we are going to compare the two expressions and try and prove Avogadro's law. So from uh, the first expression, of course, the, the expression for kinetic pressure P is equal to a third times the density times C squared. So we are going to get to gas 1. Remember, we are going to compare two gases. So for the first gas, that is, we've called it P1 is going to be a third times the density of gas 1 times the velocity squared. Of course, density is equal to mass over volume, and that explains the next step right there. That is going to be equal to mass M1 over volume right there like that. It's going to be a third times C squared like that. So this is broken down further in the next step that capital M 
which is the total mass of all the particles in that gas one in that one mole of gas one can be broken down into small m which is the mass of every particle of that gas times capital n which represents the total number of particles in that entire gas uh, like that so that is the rest remains the same v is that uh, third is right there and then c squared is there then p1 so we multiply v1 on both sides when we multiply v1 on both sides this next step becomes p times v is going to be equal to a third n m m1 m n n1 m1 c1 squared so this is the expression for the 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 first gas, of course, we, we are seeing here that here we are having mass times velocity squared. This looks like kinetic energy is going to be equal to a half m times velocity squared. We have mc squared right there. We are seeing mc squared right there. So if we introduce a half right there, and of course we're supposed to do it on both sides, we will end up with kinetic energy around there so that is exactly what we are doing in the next step we introduce their half a half pv is going to be equal to a third n times that a half m1 c1 squared like i had illustrated in our previous step but we know that this is kinetic pressure a half m1 c1 squared a half m1 c1 c squared is going to be equal to 3 over 2 times boltzmann's constant times t now we we, we 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 were able to arrive at this expression in our previous session how we come to this so we've just extrapolated this expression from our previous session if you didn't watch it i advise that you watch it and you're able to see how we arrived to this expression so where there is a half m1 c1 squared which is this we are going to substitute it with this expression which all looks like it's a constant 3 over 2 boltzmann's constant times temperature and that is exactly what we are going to put here and that is how it explains in our next step that a half p1 v1 is going to be equal to a third times capital n times now where there was a half mc squared right there we are going to to substitute this which is this with that so that's what we put there and of course this next step gets to that we multiply two on both sides here to remove the two from here times two on both sides so that these two cancels with that two and on this side we remain with p1 v1 giving us two thirds times capital n times three over two kbt like that and so you realize that p1 v1 is going to be equal to capital n right there times boltzmann's constant because this two goes with that this three goes with that remain with n kbt which is that expression and that is our first expression of um, na na expression number one now this is for gas one we are going to do the same treatment to our gas two so for our second gas this is exactly what we are going through we are going through the same things like we went through earlier i want to go ahead and explain them again and so as you all see it we are going to end up with the same expression like before that p2 v2 is going to be equal to n k b t and that is going to give us our second expression or our second equation as you may call it so now we have two expressions we have the first one which is p1 v1 is going to be equal to that and we have our second one which is p2 v2 which is equal to that now remember even when we were i was trying to introduce avogadro's law in the first steps of this video we said that we were having two gases and we were subjecting these two gases to the same pressure and the same volume. And remember, we said that if we subject this gas to the same pressure, these two gases to the same pressure and the same volumes, it means that P1 V1 is equal, going to be equal to NRT using the uh, ideal gas equation. P2 V2 is going to be equal to NRT using the ideal gas equation. So if the pressure and the volumes are the same, it means that P1 p1 v1 and p2 v2 are the same if these two are the same it means that this and that are also the same so in the same breath it's exactly what we are going to apply here that if p1 and v1 and p2 and p1 v1 is the same as p2 v2 it means that this is also going to be the same as that this is exactly what we have written here that p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so uh, and also the temperature t1 is going to be equal to the temperature t2 which is equal to the temperature t 
the temperature is also going to be the same and of course from there you will find that the Boltzmann's constant KB is going to cancel out with that the temperatures will cancel out with that and you realize that the number of particles in the first gas is going to be equal to the number of particles in the second gas so n1 is going to be equal to n2 and that's how we are able to prove Avogadro's law which simply states that the equal volumes of all gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Ksembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.